everybody, it's Dr. Eric Balkavich. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today we want to talk about hypothyroidism and something called MTHFR. Um, I get a lot of people calling who have found out that they have a genetic polymorphism of this MTHFR gene, and they want to know if it's causing their thyroid condition or if their thyroid condition is related to the MTHFR. And there is a connection. So uh, matter of fact, there's lots of importance as to how these two things interplay, but today we just want to focus on kind of one aspect of the connection between hypothyroidism and the MTHFR gene. And so what is MTHFR? It's not a curse word. It stands for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, and MTHFR is the enzyme that converts dietary folate to something called methylated folate. Methylated folate is the more active form of diet of folate in the body. And so it's really critical to a lot of processes, especially a process called methylation. Okay. And methylation is critical to producing, producing energy to healthy cell membranes, to bile formation, to hormone formation, uh, to detoxification of all kinds of different things in the body production of glutathione and just more, hundreds of processes. There's about 200 different methylation reaction going on in every cell in your body every second. So it's critical uh, to the health of your, and the, of your body and the health of your physiology. So MTHFR polymorphisms are what we're talking about. Now, a gene like MTHFR has a specific amino acid sequence. When that amino acid sequence is disrupted, it changes how the, the gene and the enzyme it produces functions. And so we call this a polymorphism or a SNP for short. Typically when you have polymorphisms, the, the gene or the gene codes an enzyme and that enzyme can have either increased function or decreased function. In the case of MTHFR, there's a, two different variants here that we typically talk about 677 7, and 1298. But when there's a, when there's a SNP or a polymorphism of the MTHFR gene, it usually means a slowing of the gene's function. It's not as efficient or functional. And so, it can be mildly compromised for some people or it can be really significantly compromised. Some, some people have uh, this MTHFR gene SNP and it really creates uh, some havoc on their health. Other people, and it doesn't seem to create much of an issue. Okay, so it's a different for every person. In a normal or wild vi variant, and that means the, the amino acid sequence is kind of the standard, what we should see. Um, MTH requires cofactors and even if you have a SNP or a polymorphism that enzyme still requires cofactors and so when we take a look at folate being converted to methyl tetrahydrofolate it requires there's a number of steps here that aren't here to keep the chemistry simple but it requires this MTHFR enzyme and then it requires cofactors in this situation it requires B2 vitamin B2 and vitamin B3 so what are cofactors? I probably should explain that. Cofactors are things that help the enzyme work. They're typically vitamins, minerals, or other molecules. Think about cofactors in relationship to your car. Your car can get you from point A to point B, but for the car to work properly, it needs good gas and oil. Without gas and oil, car doesn't run too well. So you can consider gas and oil cofactors for your car. So B2 and B3 are the cofactors for the MTF, MTHFR gene, whether it's the normal or wild variant or you have a polymorphism. So B2 is what we really wanna talk about today. And B2 is also known as riboflavin. And essentially this is a, a less active or inactive form of B2. And what happens is you eat foods that are high in B2 or you take your B2 supplement that has riboflavin in it. It goes into the, into the GI tract. The GI tract absorbs it. And then the B2 has to be transported inside the cell. And once it's inside the cell, for the B2 to be functional, it has to be converted to the more active form, something called flavin adenine dinucleotide. We'll just call it FAD for short. And it's actually FAD, not the riboflavin that's used in this reaction. So what does this have to do with thyroid hormone? I'm getting there. The conversion of B2 to FAD occurs within the cells, okay? 
When we talk about hypothyroidism, we talk about the symptoms of hypothyroidism are the result of deficient levels of T3 getting to the nucleus of your cells. It doesn't matter how much T4 or T3 is in the bloodstream. To not have hypothyroid symptoms, you need sufficient levels of T3, the active thyroid hormone, getting to the nucleus of your cells. So, we call this state of decreased T3 in the cells cellular hypothyroidism. And that can occur with a healthy and a functional gland and regardless of what the T4, T3 levels are in your bloodstream. So when you have blood, you have your blood, you have T4, T3 produced by the thyroid gland, the blood carries the T4 and T3 around the body as it washes over tissues and cells that T4 and T3 is actively transported into the cells. T3, if the cellular health is one where it's trying to increase metabolism, T3 can be transported directly into the nucleus to help stimulate metabolism. If the cells under a stress response or trying to downregulate cell metabolism, T3 will be converted into T2. When T4 enters the cell, it too has two pathways. If the cell is trying to increase cell metabolism, T4 is converted to T3. T3 stimulates, binds to the receptor in the nucleus and it stimulates metabolism. But if there's a stress response on the cell or the cell is trying to downregulate cell metabolism, T4 is converted to reverse T3. The important part here is T3. T3 inside the cell is what's needed to convert B2 to this active form FAD. So if I ha have insufficient levels of T3 inside the cell, I can't convert B2 to FAD. If I don't convert B2 to FAD sufficiently, then regardless of whether I have a polymorphism or not, we're going to have down regulation of that MTHFR enzymes not going to work as well okay now this piece is really important so if I have decreased cellular levels of T3 because I have a stress response on the cell or the cells trying to downregulate metabolism I don't I'm gonna have less T3 to convert B2 to FAD it's not only going to create a problem with the MTHFR gene, it's going to create a number of issues elsewhere. And I'll do other videos to explain that. But if you have decreased FAD, you have decreased function of the MTHFR gene, especially even if it's a healthy gene. If you have a combination of cellular hypothyroidism and downregulation of FAD or decreased conversion of FAD, and you have an MTHFR SNP, now you're going to have more significant health challenges. So what do you do? Do you, do you just take more B2? Do you just take more T4? That's not the way to address this appropriately because if you just take more T4 and force more T4 into the cells, you're probably gonna drive more reverse T3, not more T3. If you just take more B2 in, a, in your diet and you get more B2 absorbed in, if the B2 gets into the cells but you can't convert it to FAD, you're still not going to have the, the solution you're looking for. So what do you do? You really need to address what's causing the cellular stress. What's causing the cell to downregulate cell metabolism? And I've talked about this on numerous vid videos. It could be a microbial stress or a bacteria, a virus, some organism that's, create, that's inside the cell that's creating the stress response. It could be emotional stress. What goes on in your head can create stress and create this same stress response that down regulates cell metabolism. It could be because you're dieting and you're consuming too little amount of calories could be part of this mechanism. It could be that you don't sleep at night or you breathe in properly, especially at night and create hypoxia, which we talked about on thyroid uh, Thursday 61, how that can trigger cellular hypothyroidism. So really what you want to do is you want to work with a functional medicine practitioner like myself to figure out why the cellular metabolism is occurring in the first place. Sometimes we need to look at diet for people. People who have riboflavin deficiencies, they just may not eat foods that are sufficient riboflavin. They may be taking stomach acid medications that decreases the production or the absorption, I should say, of B2. They may have leaky gut issues. 
uh, there may be a number of situations that are going on that decrease that cause a decreased absorption of B2 so there isn't sufficient getting there this is where it can become really helpful to work with a functional medicine practitioner so this is a little explanation of the connection between hypothyroidism and MTHFR it's a bit more complex than this but the key point is if you have MTHFR and you want to know is there a connection between it and your thyroid physiology there absolutely is and the best situation is for you to work with a functional medicine practitioner like myself to help you figure out where this whole process is breaking down it's not as simple as just giving more methylated folate that doesn't always work for people it's not necessarily as simple as just getting more riboflavin into the diet sure if you're not eating foods high in riboflavin maybe you should do that uh, if you've got some gutty problems you need to get those addressed but I highly advise you to work with somebody like myself who understands the physiology so we can get you to your end game to help you with the solution much faster. So hopefully this helps you. Uh, this episode of Thyroid Thursday, look forward to more Thyroid Thursdays in the coming weeks. Take care.